Only 1,800 calories a day? That doesn't seem enough. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and don't forget to check out my resources below. If you want to speak with me, there is a link in the box. I saw this video a while ago on munchies and it, was, and it was about this ballerina in LA and what she eats in a day. You might think that ballerinas starve themselves, that they're all anorexics, that they only eat 800 calories a day, but I was pleasantly surprised when I watched this video. So I'm going to show you what this ballerina eats in a day and see if we can glean any lessons. Remember, this is not dietary advice. Okay, let's see what Teresa, our ballerina, eats in a day. Okay, she's 5'7 and 115.5 pounds. This tells me a couple things. One, she's really thin. 5'7, 115. The most women who are 5'2, 5'3 are 115. She's 5'7 and 115. Now, I'm not saying she's underfeeding herself. All I'm saying is that's pretty petite but she has to be because her sport demands it when you're a ballerina you're expected to be thin and pretty and you have to be thin because you're performing all of these incredible moves and you can't have a lot of excess fat on you the second thing it tells me is that she's very precise with her weight 115 and a half i'm not 115 i'm not 116 i'm 115 and a half she weighs herself consistently and she knows exactly how to maintain that weight so speaking of weighing yourself, should you weigh yourself? I think you should. I don't think there's anything wrong about stepping on a scale once a week. It's definitely not disordered. But when you're a professional, when you have to be really exact, you need to weigh yourself. So I like to have a corn dog first thing in the morning. Teresa has a corn dog in the morning. This is really unorthodox, but who says that the only thing you can have in the morning is pancakes and waffles? Personally, I'm not a huge fan of corn dogs. I think I've only had one in my life, but if a corn dog gives you the energy you need, go for it. After all, it does have fat, has protein, and it has some carbs. It's kind of like having a burger. And so it's 240 for one of them. There's nothing wrong with frozen meals. It's probably not the freshest ingredients, probably doesn't have the best uh, macronutrient profile, but it is predictable and it does come in a package. And for somebody like Teresa, that's important because she can look at the nutrition label and put that into her calculator, which we'll see in just a minute. Frozen foods, convenience foods, they have convenience. So yes, you're not cooking your own meal, which is the ideal, but we don't always have time to do that. That's why I say oftentimes you have to choose the second best option. What's wrong with a frozen meal? So I am 115 and a half pounds and I feel I dance my strongest at 114 pounds. So 115.5 isn't enough. She has to get down to 114. Why? Because she thinks that's her ideal weight. That's when she performs the best. Nothing wrong with that, but at 5'7", 114, she's probably in tip-top condition. And that's a really hard weight to maintain. At some point in the video, she said that she dances from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. I don't know if that's like seven hours continuously. That would be like two marathons in a row. But she's working out a lot. I mean, ballets, it's, you know, physical, it's, it's demanding. And so she's going to try to lose a half a pound a week, every week for three weeks. Half a pound a week, that's not a lot. That's what, 1800 calories. So you just cut a little here, cut a little there, and you can make that. But when you're already lean and you're trying to get super lean, half a pound a week can be tough. To lose half a pound a week, I do a 250 calorie deficit a day, which has me consuming 1,604 calories a day. So I'll be there in three weeks. She's consuming 1,604 calories a day. This might be a little too exact, 1,604. Whenever I hear numbers in the third or fourth decimal place, like 1,604 or 1,630, I start to get a little skeptical. Even for somebody like Teresa, who is a ballerina, do you need to be that exact? Can you even be that exact? These nutrition labels are not exactly 100%. Our measurements are not 100%. The absorption rate of a lot of these foods is not 100%. So 1,604, that's like trying to hit a bullseye. But it goes to show how much attention to detail that she has. In some ways, I admire that. She's very regimented. She knows what she wants. She has a goal. She has a number. She knows exactly how much she needs to consume. She's very dedicated to her task. 
Now here's a lesson here. Unless you are a ballerina or a professional athlete, you don't need to be this exact. You don't need to be counting everything. You don't need to be weighing everything. You don't need to be looking at all the labels. You don't need to know exactly how many calories a day you need to be eating. Unless you have something at stake, unless you're trying to earn a prize or a trophy or whatever, you don't need to be this exact. Keep in mind, she's a professional, you're not. So we had the three clementines. We're estimating that at 70. Wonder. Right before I came here, I had curry chicken, 250. See how she's calculating everything? See how she is so meticulous? She's got calculators, she's got apps. She's writing everything down. I used to keep spreadsheets. You know, spreadsheets, they, they automatically add everything. It's very easy to use. And I remember back in my, my ED days, I used to count everything, even the clementines. You said, okay, I had four clementines. Each one is 35 calories. I, I didn't know. I mean, that's a good guess, but I didn't really know. But the fact that she would count everything, including a little clementine, which is basically just a ball of water, shows you how meticulous she is. But again, unless you're a professional and you need that level of detail, you don't need to count your clementines. I'll eat over 2,000 calories but it'll still bring me in the 1600 range. Most disordered eaters play these number games. I can have this much, I can't have this much, I, this is my target, and they're constantly like writing things, and they're constantly calculating things, and they have databases. Now for her, it might be useful because she has something at stake, she's a ballerina. For most disordered eaters, it's just a complete waste of time, and it turns into a mental game. All of these calculations and all of these numbers all they do is harm your mental health. They don't make you healthier. They don't help you reach your goal. Most disordered eaters need to focus less on numbers. They need to calculate less. They need to add less. They need to use fewer databases. They need to use fewer apps. They need to write fewer things down. They need to do the opposite of what she's doing. She's doing it because she needs to. I eat prepackaged food because I don't have much time. It's really easy to know what's in it and I'm not a very good cook. I couldn't make a better case for convenience food myself. It's fast, it's convenient, you know what's in it, and if you don't have a lot of time, it's the next, next best thing. Is that I do eat from all the food groups. She eats from all the food groups, so she's a ballerina, she's not vegan, okay? she eats a little bit of everything. Uh, at some point she had grains, she's had yogurt, she's gonna eat meat at some point, obviously eats fruits and vegetables. I don't know about nuts, those might have too much fat for her, but she eats a variety here, which is a good thing. So I'm having one serving of this, which is two ounces and 200 calories. And I'll just weigh it, because this is one of those things that it takes a little while to know. She has cereal for dessert. So she has a corn dog for breakfast and cereal for dessert. Kind of unorthodox, but who says you can't do that? And I notice that she's weighing her food which is not necessarily a bad thing. I've done it before. Once in a while, I'll still do it. I still have my scale with me, but I used to weigh everything and I didn't need to. I wasn't a professional athlete. I was only pretending to be. She is professional, or at least she's aspiring to be professional. Again, when you have something at stake, you need to be more meticulous. When you don't, relax. I think that it's a lot more food than people expect. Take note of that, anorexics. She eats more than what you would expect. If you watch the video, she shows how much food she has. She puts all the food on the counter so you can see it. And it's actually a pretty good amount of food. It's like 1,800 calories for the day. Now, 1,800 calories when you're dancing several hours a day seems woefully insufficient. If I work out just an hour a day, I'm already at 25, 2,600. But that's me and i don't need to be super petite like she does but she eats more than what you would expect she's not starving herself she's eating a variety of foods she's just very meticulous and she's very careful what are you in the mood for steak <laughs> me too i am a fan of meat if it doesn't have meat to me it feels like a snack see she eats meat. She's not vegan. She's not restricting herself. She's clearly not anorexic. And this other woman that she's with, I guess she's another ballerina. She's having steak too. Although I imagine they're not having too much. Three, maybe four ounces. Steak has a lot of fat. It's not pure protein. That was 133 calories for that whole big piece of steak versus one tablespoon of olive oil. When you're on a low calorie diet, and I think 1800 calories is low calorie, especially when you're working out that much. 
the easiest way to cut calories is oils and fats. When I'm watching what she eats, she doesn't eat a lot of fat. And she's saying that steak only had 133 calories. Well, it wasn't a big piece of steak, was it? That's only two, maybe three ounces. But she's smart to cut out oil. Now, oil has benefits. Olive oil helps the brain. But if you're on a really low calorie diet, you can't afford to have 12 grams of fat in one tablespoon. That's why you should always ask for the dressing on the side. Little restaurant tip for you. Right now I'm trying to do vegetables with every meal just because it kind of helps me to get more full. I think she means fuller. But here's another dieting hack. Eat low calorie, low density foods like vegetables, like fruits, like most whole grains, beans, and you will feel fuller on less food. And that's actually what the counting helps me do. It helps me think ahead. Watch my video on Dr. John McDougall. That was part of his philosophy. Eat low density foods, a lot of starches, so like 100 calories per 100 grams, usually, and you will feel fuller sooner. If you eat a lot of processed food, if you eat a lot of sugar and flour and a lot of full fat foods, you are going to eat a smaller volume of food. Fat is more satiating, but it's really easy to overdo it. Remember that one little tablespoon of olive oil, it's 120 calories. You could eat two small apples for 120 calories. And you could eat an entire bag of kale for 120 calories. Counting has a purpose, doesn't it? I'm not saying counting is necessarily a bad thing, but for most disordered eaters, they need to do that less. They've counted, 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 they track, 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 it gives them the sense of control, but it never really gets them anywhere. For Teresa and her friend, Counting serves a purpose. They know how much they're eating. They know that they're on track. Their diet is really dialed in. And it's dialed in because it has to be. They need to know that they are on track. They need to know that they are doing what they should be doing. They need to know that they are going to reach their goals. Counting, tracking, weighing, they all serve a purpose. What's the main takeaway of this video? The main takeaway for me is just because ballerinas do this doesn't mean you should. Ballerinas have to dial in their diet. They need to know what their macros are. They need to know what their calories are. They need to know how much they're eating at all times. It is just a demand of the sport. Their sport requires it. If they don't do it, then they might gain weight. They might not hit their weight targets and they might not get that position that they want. Weighing and tracking, it seems onerous. It seems like a waste of time, but for them, that's just the price of their job. But for you, you're not a ballerina, you're not an athlete, do you need to do this? Probably not. In fact, if you have a history of anorexia, orthorexia, yo-yo dieting, I recommend weighing stuff less. I recommend tracking stuff less. Doesn't mean you should never weigh yourself. Doesn't mean you should never put food on a scale. Doesn't mean that you should never ever track your calories. I think tracking your calories and doing an inventory of what you eat each day, once in a while, is a good idea. You just don't need to do it every time. At one point in this video, she ate a granola bar and then immediately wrote down how much she just ate. You don't need to do that. So don't watch this video and think, well, ballerinas do it, I think I'll do it. They have different demands than you do. And a note for anorexics and orthorexics. She just said, if you don't eat enough, you won't be able to perform. Keep that in mind. And she's eating way more than you think. My guess is a lot of ballerinas, they become anorexic or they develop an eating disorder because they have to perform, but they can't weigh too much. It's a very fine line. Eat too much, you weigh too much. Eat too little, you don't perform. If you're a ballerina or you're in any weight dependent sport, I highly recommend meeting with a dietitian and come up with some plan that gives you the energy that you need. It is very tempting for athletes like this to succumb to anorexia, to orthorexia. And I imagine that not all ballerinas are eating like Teresa. They're probably not eating enough. Do you eat like a ballerina? Let me know in the comments below. Hope you found this video educational and entertaining. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my resources below. If you like this video, I'm sure you'll like one of the other videos that you see on the screen. Click one of them and I'll see you there. And as always, eat the way you're designed to.